Yes, now we are talking about a data management plan that is uh, an integral, integral part of responsible research. Um, Maria Elisa Kuusniemi is not uh, doing the presentation, is Lisa Ewa talking? Um, we all know that uh, Article 15 in the Model Grant Agreement is about data projection and there is a 15.2 data uh, processing by the um, beneficiaries. First of all, um, I, I'd like to open up a little bit the benefits of open science. It has been quite a change of culture during the last years. Some of the, the companies and SMEs are still not very convinced about the benefits of uh, the open science. But in general, it has been proved already that uh, it has lots and lots of benefits for uh, different um, actors in, in society and in science. And there are greater opportunities for collaboration, higher citizen rates, so no one is uh, stealing stealing the, the scientific achievements from the researchers. On the contrary, there are uh, better visibility, better citation rates and, and better opportunities for individual researchers because of the open science. It's also seen a huge benefit for the societies, bigger and big ones and communities. Uh, the the um, cycle of the exploitation, the cycle of the the knowledge to disseminate, is uh, much uh, better, and the transparency of the research processes, transparency of of the results is better. So uh, because science is uh, making questions and giving answers from the different perspectives. The transparency and openness is clearly uh, a beneficial thing. And here is the picture of uh, what can be included or what is traditionally included in the open science as, as a whole. There is an open notebooks, open data, open access, open source, citizen science, what means that uh, the uh, the citizen is included in the in the scientific process, and and uh, citizens may, um, for example, send some samples or give a, uh, give samples for the scientific purposes. So they are uh, joining; they are included in the process as as a whole. There's open peer review uh, and scientific social networks and open educational resources. So all of these are open science, not only open access, what is the most well-known part of the open science family. And then we go to research data management and uh, um, it research, research data management enables open data. Data management life cycle and research life cycle can, can see together when we are going from planning to documentation, projection, storing, opening, preserving, how we are managing the data. And at the same time, research is uh, having its own life cycle. It's, uh, uh, and when, when these are uh, talking or communicating together and it's interactive. So that's the best possible way to, to manage the whole life cycle, both research and, and, and data. Um, um, we have heard before, um, quite often said that the data is the new oil. And, and we can also say that good data management practice oils the wheels of research. So if the data is managed in a professional and, and good way, it means that the research process, process and research life cycle, it's easier, it has less uh, administrational burden, it, it gives uh, 
you the time to do the research and not concentrate on uh, trying to find who owns the, the background, who can access and where to find the files, where is that document. So good management for all the data means that it helps you uh, to quit all the, um, well, uh, um, finding and searching the documents that should be available fast and and so uh, why manage research data and why ma write a data management plan? First and foremost, it is good research practice. It is good uh, that's uh, self evident. Secondly, it helps you save time and money. As I said, uh, back in time when research the researchers needed to sit in library and all the articles were uh, copied somehow and and the search for the for the sources and search for the information search for the data it's it's very time consuming and and it's it's very expensive so uh, if you have a good uh, data management it means that you really don't need to, to concentrate on finding the information. It's there, it's uh, archived, it's uh, labeled, it's easy to find, and it's a, it's a good form. Thirdly, you will reduce the risk of losing your data. Well, you do uh, the formatting of data well, and you store it in, uh, in a good repositories, and somebody is doing care of it, so it's not losing anywhere. Um, it's quite often that the, the researchers are changing their laptops when the laptop is uh, kind of collapsing. If your memory is full or if there is some other difficulties. When you are using a good uh, data management, it means that you uh, you um, uh, you um, um, so, you have the storage for your data so well that uh, it, you, you minimize the risk of losing it. Fourthly, you will be able to anticipate complex ownership and user rights issues in advance. We come to that, that legal issues also in, during this presentation. It helps you support open access to create productive future collaborations. That is exactly true. If you can show how how good you manage your research data you are much much better uh, uh, target for for the partnerships you will meet your funders requirements that's for sure and lastly your dmb reflects your managerial skills as a project leader that is not uh, a trivial issue that uh, managing a, a huge multi beneficiary projects for several years with several work packages, a lot of uh, different uh, leads and, and uh, different sources. It means that you are a good project leader if you can lead and, and manage your data in a coherent way. The normal and general topics of a data management plan are as follows. General description of the data used and produced, ethical and legal compliance, documentation and metadata, storage, backup, data transfer and access control during the research project, opening, publishing and archiving the data after the research project, and data management responsibilities and resources. Um, these DMP tools can be found by Googling. So there are lots and lots of good um, tools that you can use to build up your own data management plan. But these are the most common topics that you need to go through if you want to have a good um, data management plan. And DMP is not for the explaining uh, the substance of the project or the substance of research, it's really the management plan. It 
it's it is concentrated the how you are collecting your data how you are uh, storing it how how do you do the backup and this for example this ethical and legal compliance who has the rights to the uh, uh, to this um certain um data uh, how you can achieve the the access rights uh, who has uh, keys or um uh, code for that and so it's it's very really um important that everything is documented uh, for the data um, in in a legal way as well and access rights are is uh, is very important documentation metadata we come to this metadata later but i can say at this point already that metadata is the description of the data so it tells us that what is in the can where where the data is we can think about for example uh, a thin can if there is no paper label around the can we can never know if the, if there is uh, tomatoes or if there are chili peppers but when it is explained outside the thin can then that's metadata we know what is in there And now we take a moment to think about the data you use and produce during research. Can you see the huge value of the data? If no, please think harder because there is lots of value. And denying the truth doesn't change the facts. Every researcher manages personal data of some sort, regardless of the research field or topic. And this was the point I, I referred in the beginning. It is in a model grant agreement already that how we need to take care of the personal data. It's like uh, uh, research nowadays, it's not uh, nowadays, or it hasn't never been uh, something that, that goes outside the society, or outside uh, the overall world. So. The truth is that it's it's there, the data is there and you have to manage it. This is an example of uh, uh, legal issues, ethical and legal issues. Now we have um, interesting partners, principal investigator, PhD students, and they are working uh, perhaps in the university. Then we have research infrastructures, we have third parties, and then of course we have research funders. They may be national or international. And so if we don't have a good management for today that, uh, and if we don't uh, kind of uh, um, plan it and, and decide it and, and be careful with it, so the, the situation may be like this. All these uh, parts may, may say the data is mine. And then the funder says rights need to be transferred to university. So how can you be, how can you transfer to data if there is not even knowledge who owns the data or who have access to data or who have right to use the data? And if all the legitimate interest has been uh, taken care of, including, for example, personal data issues. So it's it's not a simple issue to to write down to the DMP uh, of these legal issues, and it it really needs expertise. This is about the metadata. Metadata documentation is the practice where you label your data. Metadata is the text in the labels, and metadata is uh, is um, um normally or um, it should be used uh, through the standardized vocabulary it should be written in a standardized way and i come to that later why so metadata is not the description 
or should not be the description that you make up your mind and you just explain very very widely what is there. It has a certain model, it has a certain vocabulary, it has a certain uh, structure. Then the metadata is good because all the search engines and, and, and uh, software should uh, find it when you are looking for the information that is uh, defined in this metadata. And then the storage, where the, where the store research data and who has the access, these are extremely important questions. And there are uh, some kind of open um, data um, repositories, so to say, for example, um, ResearchGate or Academy Edu or something like that. So those are not the research data repositories that we are thinking about. We are thinking about the uh, the repositories that are um, like um, good, good or, or fit for the purpose in this situation. Quite often there are university libraries who are taking care of these issues and, and they are experts in the uh, universities uh, administration or libraries who are taking care of these repositories. There are also international very good repositories. They are they may be um, uh, they may be uh, for all the the disciplines. They may be just one discipline. That he this is for the health and cancer issues, and this is for this and that. Uh, but there are also uh, lots of uh, that, not lots of, but there are some uh, repositories provided by the Commission as well. So uh, European Open Science Cloud and and through those um, is, uh, European research um, um, Open Research Europe platform. Or I don't, I'm not sure about their functioning, but anyway, the research. Uh, repositories are many and you should just uh, look the one that is um, very uh, good, uh, reputated and liable. Then you need to uh, decide who has the access to this um, information in which repositories and, and that's something that you describe in DMP as well. This is uh, a table uh, when catering the data, then the, the, the data is analyzed, then the visualization, so it needs to have the, the data management plan in general is meant for the digital, uh, the data that is in digital form, and then the sharing. So these are the, the points that you have to take care of when you are doing or planning when you are doing the management data management plan and and what part of the data you can open what data you have to be closed and and then explain in the the plan that what are these uh, access rights for different directions And now the responsibilities and resources of data management. Um, cultural change is not easy. As I said in the beginning, uh, the culture has changed a lot, but still we have a lot to do with this issue. And we are slowly going towards the open academic culture. Uh, there are still a lot of um, fear and, and hesitation that if the open science and, and opening the data, if it's good for, for individual researchers or not. But I, along the years, we have found that the more you use open science uh, uh, tools and you use open science policies, the more the researcher is uh, achieving citations and the more prestige and, and uh, for example, those researchers who have been asked to be uh, keynote speakers in, in seminars and big uh, global events, those are 
quite often the researchers who have used effectively and strategically the open science and tools. So the culture is changing and it, the change means that uh, people need to understand and have knowledge about, for example, Creative Commons licenses or other, other licenses that, uh, that uh, uh, protect your copyrights and your, and your um, reputation. Slowly but changing. This is an old picture from the Finnish Heritage Agency. We used to have this kind of teacher going from one house to another and teaching uh, uh, farmers how to read and write. And well, this is not so long ago. I don't know how long back we need to go, but I think 19th century or something. But in the, the course of the humankind, it's quite short the time that we have uh, moved into the digi digitalized world and, and the data. We have so much data uh, going around in, in so many uh, uh, networks that uh, it's, it's amazing. And that's why we need to take care of even, even more in the, uh, for the future. Um, this is one of the examples of the DMP tools that I, I mentioned already. These, uh, for example, this DMP online or in the Finnish uh, made Tooli DMP. Um, they are very, very easy tools to use. They guide you forwards. They have uh, questions. And if you answer all the questions, you have uh, a DMP. Uh, ready. So the plan will be uh, structured uh, through the questions and if you uh, fill, fill the forms and, and, and follow the checklist, uh, finally you have a printable DMP in your hands. And, and it's, yeah, I, I cannot say more, more of that. They are, as I said in the beginning, beginning by Googling, you can find these tools and, and, and they are very easy, easy to use. Um, this is something that is self-evident, but sometimes perhaps uh, forgotten. Research, research funders do not fund one use research. So nowadays, at least all the uh, funding terms and conditions, both nat national and international, they are requiring that if you, or if you yourself, your project, your consortium, if uh, there are good results and data generated, they need to be uh, opened and, and used and exploited both scientifically and, and commercially, if, if possible. And uh, the science is not only for science, the science is also for society. And now a little bit more specific uh, for the Horizon Europe, what it means the, to have this research data management, what are, what are the requirements and, and details? This is um, from the proposal template. In, in uh, this uh, published proposal template, there is a point 1.2 of the method methodology. And there is uh, uh, um, this that you have to describe open science practices as an integral part of the proposed methodology. And how will that increase the chances of the project delivering of objectives? This is more or less the same that Heli explained about the, the exploitation plan, exploitation, dissemination and exploitation plan. So it's the same issue. You have a bunch of tools for the open science, open science practices, open access and, and all those open data. These, all these tools are available and you need to choose the, those ones that are good for your purposes. You don't, it's not, uh, it's not enough for the proposal that you say that 
uh, we respect the open science principles. We do respect the open science policies and follow them when when uh, needed. That's not enough. It, it, it has to be more detailed. It has to be uh, concise and coherent again, these two words. So because the open science world is is big and there are lots of tools to you can use. So you pick up those and you explain why you are using this and 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 in which point. And then there is a trap. Uh, in the proposal template, there is a sentence. If you believe that none of these practices are appropriate for your project, please provide a justification here. So if someone really believes that there are no practices that are appropriate. So I would say that your proposal is like a big, big minus, a long minus for, for this uh, part. Because if you remember the picture when the man had to sink his head without seeing the outside world, that, that's not the question. There are practices that are appropriate. You just have to uh, point out those that are important for for the project you have. So uh, it needs to be in in this the methodology in, in is in the proposal. And then there is a, a sentence that how the data or research outputs so um, will be managed in line with the fair principles and the, the description should be specific to your project. These fair principles uh, are important. They are ex, ex, um, are they? Uh, now I don't remember where they are, these uh, fair principles, but they are um, important anyway. We come to those. Um, in data management plan, uh, F is uh, in the fair principles is findability, findability of data or research outputs. And for that, you should use identifiers. They are different kind of codes for different kind of data. They are uh, more or less standardized. I think there's 18 different uh, code, codes for, for these ident identifiers. Uh, the professional knows better than I what they are. Also, uh, findability uh, requires trusted repositories. As I said, uh, different kind of websites or, uh, or, or uh, social media channels are not trusted repositories. Trusted repositories are the ones that are managed in a coherent way. And in FAIR principles, A is accessibility of data or research outputs. And here, as I said before, IPR considerations are important. So who has uh, what you can open, what you need to uh, stay, what data need to stay close. Um, uh, only your own data you can open. You can because data also has owners, so the owner can decide what to do with the data. So they are. There is um, copyrights, they are transferred copyrights, and and the, these are the considerations always need to take care of. Timeline for open access, when when the open access is possible and 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 how, or access to restricted data for very verification purposes. We know that in uh, Horizon Europe, um, when the results are uh, transferred or exploited or other beneficiaries um, ask for, require for access rights in order to exploit their own um, results. So in these cases, for example, you have to open up the data to verify uh, these resu results. So these are restricted uh, openings and, and this kind of uh, access issues need to be taken care of. 
uh, I in in uh, fair principles is interoperability of data research outputs, and this means standards, formats, vocabularies for data and metadata. I mentioned about uh, uh, these uh, concerning metadata already, but then also uh, the standards and formats are very very in, uh, important because. Um, um, we have in the whole world and in, in the research world, we have so much data all over the networks and, and repositories. So they should be um, machine readable and they should be uh, in a form that, uh, that uh, people from another side of the world who are using another side of uh, tools to go through the data can also do that. And R is reusability of data research output. It uh, includes licenses for data sharing and reuse, availability of tools, software, models for data generation and reuse. Uh, we are talking about, um, for example, that if we want to have the data, we to be reusability it means that we cannot use an, an interoperability we cannot use the kind of formats that are only used in 2021 with uh, using uh, microsoft excel for example so uh, the data should be in a format that it can be used also in the future uh, we could say, for example, that science is forever and, and not only during the action. And also, it's the same with all the software I'm using at the moment. I don't know how many, how many uh, different Windows versions we have had or how many uh, different kind of uh, software and op operating um, uh, tools we are using. But if we want to have this data be reusable and interoperable in the, in the future, there should be a certain kind of formats and, and, and a little bit of thinking how it can be in, in a form that it can be used and, and it can be uh, machine read. And then, of course, in data management plan, one of the very, very important issue is how to take care of the uh, data, who is um, managing it, who is storing it, who is kind of sitting on it. So because it's not good practice if you just uh, download your software somewhere and leave it be as it is there. So uh, these repositories and these this data, it should be taken care of now and in the future. So there need to be professionals who take care of the, the, the data. So um, in order to be uh, these fair principles also in the future. In, in the proposal stage, you need to have uh, this uh, DMB. Um, as a draft or not a draft, but the, the initial plan, but then uh, a more detailed plan need to be ready uh, in six months time. And then uh, it has been written in, in model grant agreement that the DMB is, is a, a document that you have to update from time to time. So, uh, it's it's written that you have to regularly update it. So it's not something that you do deliverable in the beginning and that's it. It's really meant to be a tool for for all the projects to to become better with the, the data management and and that's why it's a, a dynamic uh, document. Also, the good research data management is an investment to research reproducibility. 
and, and its effective dissemination of outputs. For, for the proposal, the Horizon Europe proposal, plan a realistic budget. Because the DMB is an obligation, it's a requirement. So you can and you should uh, put some effort and, and budget and, and realistic time span for all this. Because it's really not a, uh, some trivial document beside the, the research project itself. It's really an, an inherent, it's, it's a part of the, the research practice. Invest to expertise. Here is uh, data stewards, managers, software engineers, lawyers, IT experts. Invest to improvement of open science skills during the research project. This is something that the Commission and EU is looking for. The management of data, the management of results, and uh, to preserve and, and, and um, storage the uh, data generated in the project. This is something that, that the, the, at this point, the funder, the research funder, is looking for. So it's, it's completely okay and it's, it's um, a supported idea to, to have a budget for these. Uh, these um, actions. Invest to databases, storage systems, data capture software, laboratory information management systems, etc. So it means that this uh, digitalization of uh, research uh, environment, it, it should include also these issues, not only that you are using your research, using laptops and, and digitalized information and, and there is uh, lots, everything happens nowadays in, in, in net. So also the investment to these uh, databases and storage systems and also the knowledge and expertise, that's something that it, it, it may be a benefit, very beneficial for the evaluation of the proposal. And expertise are needed, so no one expecting that the researcher or, uh, is capable of doing all of this by he, him or herself. So for the, for the legal issues, for example, GDPR, what is like uh, personal data issues, for access rights, for licenses, uh, a different kind of protection tools and, and, and so on. Um, background materials, background patterns, how to use them, what are the access rights for that, and, and, and um, transferring of uh, uh, rights. There are lots and lots of issues that the lawyers are expert, experts for this. Um, and also, uh, for example, non-disclosure ag agreements that are quite often used used in 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 project and if we are think about especially the the proposal states uh, they may be um, they may be need for letter of intent or memorandum of understanding and when we are thinking about the proposal and sharing information that may be confidential then the legal help is is very much needed for that and all these are linked to the data management uh, needed is data stewards and managers for example for for this they are experts in in uh, for example for example in anonymization issues software software engineers expert analysis that because it's digit, <laughs> digital um format and so uh and if if already in the proposal states or in planning uh, planning uh phase you have this kind of uh, expertise that you can use it means that when the project is starting to gather information uh the templates and the formats are, are ready so it's easier to to manage the data if you have already planned 
the like how to do it and how to storage it right from the beginning. So nobody needs to uh, adjust the information afterwards. It may be already done in the beginning, so it also uh, um, minimizes the, the administrator burden if you do the right thing from the beginning. And then, of course, IT experts. Not all the researchers are expected to be uh, experts in IT issues. Okay, this was the presentation of 